Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rust Belt Collector here, and today this is a new little series, and maybe it's the only episode, um, but it's a series that I'm going to be calling Clone Trooper Oddities, and today we are taking a look at all of these, these little Clone Trooper helmets, and you might be wondering, why are they so bouncy? Why are they like little rubbery, bouncy Clone Trooper helmets? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So initially, this is the very first one that I ever saw of these Clone Trooper helmets, these squishy Clone Trooper helmets, and it was actually on the JCC2224 channel when he was doing his collection tour. I saw on one of his shelves he talked about these little Clone Trooper helmets, and I was like, dude, where did you, uh, where'd you find those? And he didn't really remember, he remembered his, he got them from a store at one point, and I did some research, and I ended up finding an entire pack of 16 of these, and they're all different. This is obviously Commander Cody, which makes sense why JCC2224 would have it, um, but there's, uh, there's so many more, and some that are really quite unique, especially since they're clone troopers we never actually got other uh, representations of in figure form or really other memorabilia in general. Now these helmets are produced by a brand called Squeeze Me's, and they were apparently released sometime around 2008, maybe 2010. I couldn't nail down the exact day or date when these were actually created, and they may have been produced back in 2008, and then, you know, subsequently they were just in stores for many, many years. It's really hard to nail them down. It appears that these both came in a set of four, seen here in this packaging. This is the only image I could actually find of them in the package. However, they also appeared to sometimes be in, like, little uh, like change machines, the turn knob change machines you put in 50 cents or whatever, turn the knob and a little ball comes out and it's got one of these in it. Apparently there's also been reports of them being in those at like grocery stores and laundromats and things like that. So these were quite the little novelty item to collect apparently. So these were quite new to me. The first time I ever saw them was on J4's live stream and from there I did all this digging to try and find them and I finally tracked down a complete set of all 16 variants and we're going to take a look at each individual one in just a moment. Now right at the top we got to talk about uh, can this actually fit on a pencil and the short answer is kind of. You can see here that that peg hole which is what I'm going to call it because it's um well you'll see it's a peg hole. It does not really fit over I mean, it kind of does. You can kind of squeeze it very aggressively and finally get it onto a standard. I mean, this is a standard pencil. This isn't like some sort of jumbo pencil. You can kind of get it on there, and then it becomes sort of like it kind of splays the bottom out a little bit, but I guess it does work as a pencil topper. It might work better as a pen topper. Like, this could go on the end of a, of a pen, I think, a little bit better than a pencil. For instance, here's a pen with your standard, I don't know, push in style pen and it definitely fits in a little bit better however um, it doesn't let you actually like push the pen out so again there's an issue there so then you might be asking yourself why on earth would this poorly designed helmet be made if it doesn't fit on the end of a pencil very well doesn't fit on the end of a pen very practically what is it for and I believe I believe I have the answer and it's it's right here this is the Clone Wars matchstick figure. It's really the same body as any removable helmet uh, clone trooper, so you can take off the helmet. There is the Clone Wars head. You can pop that off, and wouldn't you, wouldn't you look at that? Would you look right there? That little ball joint sure does look to be about the same size as the hole on these quote-unquote pencil toppers. So if we take that off, and we just slide that right there, that fits on like a charm, like a glove. It's perfect. It doesn't have any issue. It doesn't like flex out. It's not doesn't need to be forced on or anything. It gives a little satisfying snap as you take it off. But sure enough, that goes on perfectly on the standard Clone Wars head peg. Um, so this would be like Commander Cody, Captain Rex, any of the clone troopers that have a removable head, not a helmet, but a head. That helmet can go right on just like that. So this is actually just the best way that we're going to display each each helmet as it comes along because there's 16 of these we still have to go over. Because um, they made some very fun variations, some of which we didn't even see in the Hasbro line, and I'm excited to get into those. Now I can't confirm if this is actually intentional by the company, but it sure seems that way. 
they really seem to have designed it so that it would fit directly onto a Clone Wars body and kids could have extra helmets laying around, I guess. That's the way that I see it. I, I could be wrong. Maybe somebody has other information, but it really does seem like they were like, eh, these are quote-unquote pencil toppers, um, but JK, if you want your Hasbro figures to have cool helmets, there you go. And I will say, these don't look great. I mean, you know, the, the paint apps are a little bit sloppy. You can see there on the visor, and plus the they're squishy, and so that's a thing. They're kind of glossy in some places, and they're also... They have weird like lines and textures running throughout them, which I think just has to do with the molding process for these. But regardless, um, they could work. They could work for a kid, a kid who wants cool custom clone troopers. Easy little pop and swap sets that you could get that you could pop onto clone troopers. And as a kid playing with clone troopers, I don't think they would really care necessarily that they were 100% movie accurate. They would care more so that they had a cool looking clone trooper. That's what I care about, and that's what you get with these. So, messy paint apps on pretty much all of these, but some of them are fairly intricate and I think do hold up pretty well under scrutiny. So anyways, let's take a look at the next one, pop Commander Cody off of there. And using the same mold, we have Commander Fox. Yeah, Commander Fox in a dark reddish brown color, definitely deeper red than uh, what his Hasbro variant had as, as a paint app but still definitely recognizable as Commander Fox. And a little bit fuzzy on the paint apps, but still quite cool. I'm amazed they even got the little um, floodlight there. They didn't get any of the antennas or anything, although did he have an antenna in Phase 1? I think he did, but I could be wrong. So there's, there's that, Commander Fox. And then let's do, well, I mean, we'd be remiss if we didn't do the standard Phase 1 helmet. And that looks good. I mean, that looks like the... I mean, that's actually a pretty movie-accurate Phase 1 sculpt. It's better than the initial uh, the initial Phase 1 clone sculpt that they gave us for the animated line. So if you were really desperate for a accurate movie, screen-accurate version of the helmet, there you go. And if there's not enough contrast because of the white background, you can see there they got the shape right, they got the sculpt right, the paint apps are pretty crisp on this one. And, I mean, the color white is a little bit off, but not bad. Overall, really not bad. I'm just going to go through these by sculpt. So we're going through all the Phase 1 sculpt ones, and here we have the Coruscant Guard Trooper. Very much in that same reddish-brown color as Commander Fox, you can see there. This one's a little bit more sloppy here at the frown and at that little chin marking, but not bad, not terrible overall. Again, if you're a kid, not bad. I'm noticing now though that that visor is not even in the uh, the proper like space for the visor. It's kind of overlapping up, up too high. So this one's definitely more the sloppy version, but I guess if you got a bunch of these as a child, you could kind of pick and choose which ones you wanted to use and you could definitely pick the best ones. And I know I keep saying, like, as a kid, but really, anybody today could do the exact same. If you were really interested in these, either as a collector's piece or as something just to customize your clones with, you could easily do that, buy a bunch of them, and pick and choose the best paint apps, because I'm sure some are better than others. But here we have Phase 1 Commander Gree, and I'm really impressed, again, with these paint apps. They've actually gone for screen accuracy. They've gone all the way around, gotten these little panels back here, all the way across the top. They didn't just skimp out on these and, you know, just do the front half. So really, these are better painted than some of the uh, the Saga Legends. Was it the Saga Legends? Like the Commander Bly, the 5 POA Commander Bly, and all of those atrocities. These are better painted than those, and those are Hasbro official figures. So, go figure. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Go figure. Yeah, these are really pretty decent for pencil toppers, or at least being branded as pencil toppers. Now, it's a little disappointing that they aren't cast in a harder plastic, but I get that. Like, you know, that's that's the whole point. These are meant to go on pencils, not on clone troopers. But there's a Phase 1 Captain Rex, and I wish I had a Phase 1 Captain Rex to put this on. I think this blue is going to be a little bit brighter than Captain Rex. However, um, it's a better sculpt. It's a better sculpted helmet than the standard Phase 1 Captain Rex that came from Hasbro. Only downside is uh, there's no antenna. There's no antenna sculpted onto this one. You'll see that with the next trooper as well. It's It doesn't have that for the Commander helmet, but still a nice helmet sculpt and still really nice paint apps. So 
Captain Rex moving on out, and the next one, it's Wolf. It's Wolfie Boy, the man himself, Dave Filoni's favorite, and again, very, very nicely done. Uh, especially for something like Wolf Pack, where it's a very intricate pattern. They've got the ears, they've got the little details down there. Even, it's kind of like fuzzy and, mess, like, I don't know, it's messed up there, but there's like the yellow hash marks that are on his helmet. They kind of got blended into the paint a little bit, but yeah, there's there's Commander Wolf as well. No antenna, like I said, no antenna for the Commander, but still, I, I guess if you wanted to, you could just sculpt that on or uh, glue one on from something else, but yeah, there's Commander Wolf as well. Then we have one of the one of the famous duos of the uh, Clone Wars. We have Boyle here. I believe it's Boyle. He's got the little marking there and the the diamond. I think that's Boyle. Waxer has uh, the the hash marks. I think on the side of his helmet. So this is Boyle, and yeah, he's got the he's got more of a bright yellow color than an orange color, and it doesn't even match Commander Cody. His is more yellow, his is more like mustard yellow, I guess. This would almost be like a 327th color. But either way, um, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I can't complain. These are pencil toppers. Again, these are not really meant to be screen accurate. Any accuracy that they have is, in my mind, a bonus to what they are. So again, Clone Trooper Oddities, this is just taking a look at really weird uh, Clone Trooper merchandise. And this might be an ongoing series if I find more stuff like this that is quite curious, properly licensed, not bootleg or anything, and, uh, you know, has some sort of odd quality to it like these do. So, yeah, we've got Boyle as well, which is fantastic. I would love to compare that to the proper Boyle figure that we got, but I've never seen those and I don't have them in my collection because they are quite expensive these days. So, if I ever find one in like a $5 bin somewhere at a toy show, I will... Get him, and I will do like a reverse, a retrospective review and compare it to that helmet. But until that time, we have another clone trooper. And this is one, I think this is actually the first one, that we actually never got in Hasbro form. Out of all these so far, this is one of the ones that is a really odd choice. This is either Bell or Niner from the Grievous Intrigue episode. No, not Grievous Intrigue, I'm sorry. Grievous's Lair episode. This is one of Kit Fisto's Padawans clone troopers, um, Nadar Veb. So he is one of the clone troopers that ended up dying when the shuttle blew up. And yeah, quite a curious choice. Again, it's got a nice brownish red tone to it and pretty detailed. There's some like weird like paint scuffs there or something. I'm not totally sure. And it is off-white, so it doesn't blend in. Like, like all these, they're that off-white color, but... Again, a clone trooper that we never got in Hasbro form, yet Squeeze Me's looked at that design and went, oh yeah, we're going to make that one right there. And moving on from Bell slash Niner, we have another one, which is, uh, I guess, yeah, Hasbro never made this either. We have Arc Trooper 5s, and this honestly kind of just looks like a bootleg Lego helmet, some of the ones you can find on AliExpress. Uh, this one definitely looks like that. It's the weakest out of all these, I think, but still quite interesting that they made it. Nonetheless, it actually does have the sculpted-on antenna. However, the paint apps are kind of crap on that. And the eel up at the top there, right there on the helmet, that doesn't look like an eel at all. So it's definitely the weakest out of these, but still quite quite a cool one. Also, it's I should also mention, it's very small. So I don't think it's a very good choice to add to one of these figures because it's way undersized compared to the Phase 1. It's almost like with these, they could have maybe cast it from an official Hasbro helmet. And with these, um, yeah, it looks like it was cast from a bootleg Lego helmet. Uh, I don't think it was, but I'm just saying it looks very hideous <laughs> compared to the other ones. And then on to the ARF Trooper helmets. First up, we have the like the Lightning Squad version, I think it is, uh, like Stack and Razor. This one looks really nice. It's got all the proper markings, even down to that little red swoosh there, and the uh, the blue hash marks, which are a little bit kind of going going up at a slant there, but yeah, that's okay. And then the visor, the visor looks so sad. It just kind of makes me think he's just like, 
Oh man, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to go after the battle droids anymore. He's more of a depressed ARF trooper, I think, but still cool, still an ARF trooper. Um, come to think of it, given how odd their choices of troopers are, makes me wish that they had done Commander Trauma. That would have been amazing, because then I would have just painted a body to look like Commander Trauma and actually used one of these as a Commander Trauma. But they did that. They, they instead opted for a, uh, a Geonosius ARF Trooper, and that's, that's curious. That takes a lot of effort, because it's got all the camouflage, it's got the dark visor, it's got little hash marks up there, and then it's got the orange stripe. Very, very detailed for nothing more than a pencil topper. Um, the thing is with these, specifically with the ARF Troopers, you can see there in the light reflecting there how, not warped, but it almost looks like a fingerprint kind of squished into it. And I think that just comes down to the molds that are used for these. Very cheaply molded, so there's not always like a smooth plastic finish. And you can definitely see that on specifically this ARF Trooper mold. And we're not done with the ARF Troopers, that's one, and the next one we have is the Teth ARF Trooper, which, again, this is another one that Hasbro made. They've made pretty much every ARF Trooper except for the Commander Trauma version, so that's impressive on Hasbro's part, but this is the only other one that was made by Squeeze Me's, and it's, again, very detailed. It's got lots of camouflage, looks really, really cool. I, I always love this design, and someday... Someday I should track down that specific ARF Trooper from Hasbro because I really do love the design. The camouflage looks so cool and it makes so much sense in a in a lore sense to have camouflaged ARF Troopers going out and doing reconnaissance before an actual battle. But Squeeze Me's spared no expense with this one and did all the camouflage needed to make it look awesome. So again, very, very cool, very, very curious. And we are down to our last three Next up we have the standard Clone Trooper Pilot. Nothing really crazy to say about this one. It definitely looks like a Clone Trooper Pilot. This is it next to the Matchstick mold. Um, yeah, it's it's very accurate, I would say. Nothing really to complain about there. The only difference is it doesn't have all these hoses attached, which makes sense. They wouldn't add that for a pencil topper, but they got the Republic symbols, which the one here is much clearer than the one on this side. This one's a little bit more... Uh, blurred, smudged, you know, so again, this is kind of comes down to if you buy a bunch of these, then you might get one that's a little bit better than the other. Definitely cheaply made, Jeff, definitely uh, mass produced. But still, they went ahead and made yet another complicated clone trooper. Here we have Warthog, which, in fact, I would say these paint apps, though I don't have Warthog to compare them to in person, um, this is definitely clearer than most Warthog paint apps that I've seen, since for whatever reason, that particular figure by Hasbro, especially here on the chin, or the cheek part rather, it was always like blurry and faded. The paint apps were never very crisp, so if I can find a picture, I will put it up right here to kind of show you a side-by-side -side of just how those look on the official one, but yeah, it's... It's Warthog, and it's pretty cool, so I guess if you have a really crappy looking Warthog, pop his head off and uh, give him this one. He won't have any hoses, but it might have better paint apps than that one. And now for the final Clone Trooper oddity of this video, we have the last Clone Trooper pilot. Dun 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 dun! Slammer. Yeah, if you don't recognize this guy, uh, he did not meet a very good end as he was one of Ahsoka's troopers during the Battle of Ryloth and yeah, he went down in a blaze of glory. But he's got the snowflake design which is common to all of his troopers I guess. that They all had like snowflakes incorporated into their blue squadron markings. I always liked their designs but they didn't get very much screen time. And yet here we are, we have a Squeeze Me's slammer figure and really if you were so inclined if you really wanted a slammer in your in your clone wars collection this is the perfect way to do it you could just get this figure any 2008 roughly clone wars figure that has that head joint pop it on there if you have an extra clone trooper pilot helmet you could just take off those tubes glue them onto the back of this one and you would have a custom slammer with very little effort and i think that's pretty awesome and maybe Again, I have no way of confirming this, but maybe that's what Squeeze Me's had in mind all along. They were just trying to make kind of an add-on to the Hasbro line without making an official add-on to the line. Very hard to say, but still really, really cool that it did eventually happen. 
So there we have it, the first and possibly only episode of Clone Trooper Oddities, the Squeeze Me's Pencil Toppers. Of all things, pencil toppers. I don't get it, but I'm I'm happy that I got it, I guess. Uh, these are these are really cool. I'm especially especially in love with the fact that they made both Slammer and Niner two figures that we never got from Hasbro. So if you were really if you didn't want to paint the helmets for some reason, you could just get these and pop and swap them over, which I think is great, um, just for maybe more intermediate customizers who aren't ready to dive into all of that. Or maybe you just don't have a spare helmet. Grab one of these. It's perfect. So very curious line. If you know any other information about these, or if you have a suggestion for a future Clone Trooper Oddities episode, uh, leave it down in the comments. I would love to hear from you, and maybe we'll we'll do more of these in the future if I find more Clone Trooper Oddities. But until then, if you want to keep up with this channel, down in the description there is a link tree. You can follow that over to my Instagram where I do toy photography. I post updates about the channel and also just random updates about uh, new figures being released, stuff like that. I'm usually more active over there, but I try to try to balance it back and forth. So there's that. You can also find a link down there uh, in the link tree to Entertainment Earth in case you want to order any uh, new figures coming out. You can do that through the link. Helps out the channel. I do appreciate that. Um, but apart from that, thank you for watching, be kind to one another, have a great evening, noon, or night, and I will catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.